What's up guys, we're painting florals today. Today we're painting florals using some of the techniques in my drawing flowers video. So check that out if you haven't yet. The brushes that I'm using are from Uproot Brushes, Everything Watercolor for Procreate Brush Pack. You can use other watercolor brushes that you have if you want to follow along exactly. There's a link in the description to get those. Let's get into it. Here are the brushes we are using today. If you're using different watercolor brushes, I've added a brief description here of how we'll be using these to help you identify a replacement. Also, if you want to group them together in your brush panel for easier access, you can do this by tapping to select the brush and then using another finger to scroll through the list to where you want to place it. I am working in the paper texture that comes with this brush set. I highly recommend using a paper texture if you're painting watercolor digitally. It really makes a big difference in replicating the look. The one I am using is the hand press paper. I have all of these layers set up and renamed, so I'm going to be using these eight layers throughout the project. Our first step is going to be using these two bottom layers to draw a solid base shape, which will help keep our watercolor clean and contained. We're using the symmetry guide to draw these shapes. To turn this on, tap the wrench in the upper left corner and then under the canvas, tap drawing guide to enable it. Then tap edit drawing guide here and select symmetry. The default setting should place the symmetry line in the exact center of the canvas. Then tap done and in the layers panel, make sure that the layers here on the bottom say assisted. If not, you can tap to bring up this side menu and then select drawing assist to turn it on. For these shapes, we're using the monoline brush from the calligraphy panel, which is a default brush that comes with the app and selecting a solid black color to draw with. Start by drawing a large arc shape, starting from the symmetry line. Hold the pencil to the screen so that what you've drawn snaps to an arc or a circle. If it extends almost to a full circle, that's okay. Just make sure that the line is smooth and rounded at the top. This should take up a large portion of the canvas, about half of the total length of the canvas. Next, draw a line downward for the base, connecting the spherical part of the bulb, straightening slightly, and then flaring out just a tiny bit at the bottom then close the shape completely. I have a couple places here where my lines don't perfectly overlap, so I'm going in with the watercolor eraser on the eraser tool to clean them up. Next, drag the color to color drop the fill. If when you use color drop, the color fills the entire canvas, you can adjust this by holding your pencil to the screen and sliding it to the left to decrease the color drop threshold as shown by this blue bar at the top. Next, switch to the second base layer. Create these little arches here for the threads of the bulb and then close off the shape at the bottom. Then create this little electric dome thing at the bottom. Be sure to close off the shape completely by drawing a line across the top. Then use color drop to fill these shapes too. Now we can turn off the symmetry guide. So back under the wrench here, tap drawing guide to turn it off. And then back in the layers panel, make sure that drawing assist is turned off on these layers as well. While in the Layers panel, tap to bring up the side menu, and then tap Invert on both of these layers. This will change the color from black to white. Now it will function as a shape that we can select to keep our watercolor nice and crisp. Select the metal portion of the bulb shape. To do this, tap the layer to bring up the menu and tap Select. You could also use a shortcut to do this, pressing two fingers on the layer until the selection appears. Move on to the bulb metal layer to paint the color. For this, I'm using the push down for color brush to start filling this in. I've selected a solid black, but because I'm using this on a low opacity, it'll appear nice and gray. I have the opacity set at 10% for this. I'm using multiple strokes to build up the shading on the outer edges and then in the grooves of the threading. Adding more pigment on the outside edges while the shape is selected gives it more of this real watercolor look. Now deselect the layer by tapping the selection icon up here. Back in the layers panel, select the upper bulb base shape layer, and then move to the glass bulb layer to start painting the fill color here. For this fill, I am using the lightest blue color. I'm still using the push down for color brush. I am increasing the brush size here to 20% and the brush opacity 20% for this. Starting at the outside edges again, 
I'm using light pressure to add a soft amount of color. Here, I'm trying to make sure that the pigment is mainly on the lower left edges and the left side of the bulb for more shadow. A lot of these strokes are actually drawn outside of the selection, which allows the color to build up gradually in a way that looks really natural. I'm defining the overall edge of the shape, but not adding a lot of color beyond the edges to maintain that appearance of transparent glass. But I'm adding another shadow. I'm increasing the brush size to about 30% and the opacity to 30% as well. And using super light pressure, I'm drawing in this curved shadow here to emphasize the spherical bulge shape. This follows the curve of the outer edge, but is inset towards the center. When we add the highlight lighter, this shadow will help the light pop more. To blend the shadow in, I am switching to the smudge tool. For the smudge tool for this entire painting, I'll be using the saturated water smudger on full opacity and the brush size is set to about 40%. I'm using lots of these small short motions to tap and drag the shadow in and to move the pigment around. Moving to the sketch layer, I'm using a solid black and the sketch pencil to sketch out the shape of my flowers. Don't worry about this part being perfect, this is just going to be a guide for our painting layers later. So I'm drawing these straight lines for the stems following the shape of the bulb, narrow at the base and then flaring up and out and splitting off at the top. Then I'm drawing these ellipses to indicate the shape and perspective of the flowers. I'm drawing some teardrop shapes for flower buds as well. Once the sketch is all done, go into the layers panel and decrease the opacity. You can do this by tapping here on the LB next to the layer name to bring up the slider, or as a shortcut, you can use two fingers to tap once on the layer. This closes the layer panel and brings up a slider bar at the top of the screen here. I'm setting the opacity here at about 25%. Starting with this more saturated pink, I'm going to be using the Dark Edge Little Brush to draw the petals. The brush I have set at full opacity and the size is at about 7%. Start to draw in the petals following the shapes indicated in the sketch. Now these are looser florals, so while you want the shapes to follow the sketch, the petals can still be messy. I'm layering in some pigment to help add definition to these. To add even more color in some spots, I'm using the push down for color brush with opacity set at 50%, size set to about 2%. And then with moderate pressure, painting some strokes to replicate pigment pooling in some areas. Now switching to the smudge tool, I'm gonna use the saturated water smudger to blend in the color more. Just like when painting the bulb, I'm using small and short strokes to help pull the pigment in the direction of the brush. As you paint the rest of the flowers, follow the method of using the main paintbrush, which in my case is the Dark Edge Little Brush to paint the petals, and then changing to a brush to add in a little more pigment, and then finally using the smudge tool to blend the colors and any overlapping brush strokes to make the color change look more gradual. I'm also using a couple different pinks for some more variation. It's not super important to follow the shapes that you drew in your sketch perfectly. You'll see that I paint some of the petals outside of the lines. The main point of the sketch is to help you understand the overall shape of the flower, but don't be totally confined to it. Once all the petals are drawn, choose a yellow to add to the center of the open flowers. To make this color really pop, use the eraser tool. Right now I have this set on the push down for water brush to remove just a tiny bit of the pink at the center of the flower. Then using the push down for color brush, I have a set at about 50% opacity and a size of about 3%. Add in a tiny bit of the yellow in the center of each of the open flowers. Finally, switch to the smudge tool to blend this into the pink for a watery effect. Now switch to the greenery layer and select your main watercolor brush. I have this set to 100% opacity and the size set to 4%. Follow the sketch to paint in the stems and the leaves.
Hide the sketch layer, we're done using that now. Select the layer contents of the greenery by holding two fingers on the layer until the selection appears. Use the smudge tool to blend in any overlapping strokes. You can also use this as an opportunity to add more natural looking color variation. Lighten areas up by starting a brush stroke outside of the selection and moving it into the selection. Darken areas by adding color. For this, I'm using the push down for color brush to layer in some pigment where my leaves are turned and folded. Then I'm using the smudge tool to blend any areas that need to look more gradual. This is what we have so far. To clean up and define the colors a little more, select the layer contents of the greenery layer once more. When the selection appears, go into the flowers layer and use three fingers to scrub the screen. This will clear the selected contents from the flowers, effectively removing anywhere that the greenery overlapped the flowers. Now in the layers panel, pinch to merge these two layers together. With the smudge tool, we're going to pull the green slightly into the flowers where they meet. This is going to replicate a more realistic watercolor look where the colors bleed together. You can also soften some of the edges of the leaves and the petals throughout this piece to add in some of the randomosity of more flooded watercolor. Here I find a little goes a long way, so I like to use this technique sparingly. To help add to this realism, I'm using the Blooming Cloud brush to accentuate these areas on the same green that I used to draw the leaves initially. Now this is a directional brush, so one edge is darker and the other is softer and lighter. Because of this, I am always drawing in a clockwise direction to make sure that the darker edge is on the outside. This might seem confusing, but it becomes intuitive when you're using the brush, so you'll want to make sure that you're drawing in this clockwise motion. In the Layers panel, select the Highlight layer and then tap the LB to open the Layer Blend Modes. Scroll down to the Add Blend Mode. Then choose a solid white and switch to the Push Down for Color Brush. For this, I'm keeping the opacity at 50% and setting the size to around 13%. Draw a circle shape that is slightly smaller than the size of the light bulb. Hold the pencil to the screen so that it snaps into shape. When you release, tap Edit Shape at the top to reposition it. You're going to want to keep a slight margin between the edge of the bulb and the highlight circle. Tap outside of the shape to keep these changes, and then following the margin of the circle, draw the rest of the highlight on the lower portion of this bulb. Now reduce the brush size to 6% and the opacity to 20%, and use light pressure to draw lines to highlight the threading of the metal on this base of the bulb. Keep these highlights more positioned towards the center right. Now switch to the eraser tool, which we have set on the push down for water brush. Set the size to around 20% and the opacity to about 50. Starting at the center of the bulb, use light pressure to fade the highlight. Reduce the size and opacity if you feel like you're removing too much of the highlight too quickly. Then do the same on the outer edge of the highlight to soften this edge slightly. Switch back to the brush tool, still set at the smaller size, and add a curved highlight on the left side of the bulb, inset slightly more towards the middle. Use the eraser tool to soften this highlight as well. And that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that this was helpful. Hopefully you learned something. If you paint this and post it on Instagram, I would love to see. Feel free to give me a tag or shoot me a DM or tag me in your stories or however you're posting it. And give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe for more. I put out new videos every week. Thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.